the election. The popular mobile money platforms were also disabled, making it difficult for uh, citizens and indeed uh, actors in this election to send money to the various locations that um, uh, they would normally do. And this can be only described as illegal collective punishment, which is an offense under international law. Then, after the elections, as the Electoral Commission started announcing falsified results, we called a press conference to show the world that the results that we had, which results had been announced at the polling stations in the presence of citizens and our own polling agents, the Uganda police brutally stormed our offices, broke the door. We were detained in the police cells of Nagalama, which is in Mukono district, uh, having been transferred all the way from the extreme end of Kampala city on the other side uh, of Mukono from the opposite side of where Mukono district is. Uh, this was clearly intended to isolate us and uh, to further cause uncertainty and uh, intimidation of the population. We stayed in prison without anybody telling us why we were under arrest. And eventually, last night, Major General Mugisha Muntu, our FDC party president, and myself were forced out of the prison cells without telling us why we had been arrested in the first place. We protested to be released without our colleague, Ms. Ingrid Tolinawe, with whom we had all been arrested in the same circumstances, but who was being denied uh, uh, release and eventually we were lifted out of the, out of the police uh, station, bundled into the police van, a notorious police van that has been used to intimidate and harass uh, political leaders for a long time and we were brought home, leaving behind all our possessions. Miss Ingrid Trinawe, even as I talk now, is still in that same prison and still no reason for her detention has been told to her or to anybody. Therefore, I have come to ask for two things. One, that the results of the presidential elections must be rejected by all who believe in democracy and certainly by the international community. Two, that an international commission should be established to audit the results of this election as soon as possible so that uh, there is an independent account of what happened in this election. Whereas I am talking to you as a person that has been a candidate in the just ended elections, I more importantly address you as a human rights and pro-democracy activist. As you know, I have spent my entire adult life struggling for democracy in our beloved country. I come from a generation that believes in democracy as a gateway to human rights and human dignity and to the rule of law and to tolerance and to pluralism. Any government which claims to derive mandate 
from which people must believe and practice democracy. No one can be a full citizen of the 21st century without enjoying the full blessings of democracy. And the claim to the contrary would certainly be false. There can be no citizenship without democracy. Today, democracy is on trial in Uganda. The evidence is all there around us. The most sacred right of a citizen is the right to vote peacefully and freely. There is no greater right in a free and open society. It is upon the right to vote that all other democratic rights are anchored. Today, the right to vote and the right to do so peacefully has been wantonly violated in Uganda. This violation should be a profound moral offense for all of us. A profound offense to all citizens of Uganda. And it is an offense to all Africans and to all global citizens. When you violate the rights of an African to vote, you insult his and her humanity and you rob him or her of their human dignity. This was the fundamental offense of colonialism. The odious practice and the insulting belief that an African could be a subject but never a citizen. Today, in Uganda, the right to vote, a very, the very essence of citizenship, has been violated with impunity.